Pastor 414 Ministries with something to think about. Today I'm going to read you a verse. It's called Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, and it states this. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Let me tell you this story about my family and I. We, just a couple days ago, it's Christmas time, so we go to this, this really cool square, and they've got all these neat events around there, okay, for Christmas, all right? We even saw a real reindeer. No, I am not kidding. It was a real reindeer. I, I, first, I see this, this, this animal there, and it's got these horns, these antlers, right? And I'm thinking, how did he tie those antlers on that, that, that horse's head? I couldn't figure it out. And as we're talking to the guy, he goes, no, this is a real reindeer. And I'm thinking, get out really and he's not only got one he's got a few of them back home so that was kind of cool right and so as we're walking around the square we see other really cool things we've got hot chocolate and coffee i got my coffee with me right but there was hot chocolate there too and they had popcorn and all sorts of cool things and then oh my goodness not only did they have carriage rides with real horses and stuff and you could go around the square they had an open fire there right and what were they doing chestnut roasting on an open fire okay they had real chestnuts roasting on an open fire now i don't know about you but i've never really had chestnuts roasted on an open fire and i've always wondered what would that be like wouldn't that be just kind of cool i bet they taste delicious you always hear them in the song so they have to be sweet and crunchy and everybody has to absolutely love them that's what I thought, okay, until I got my first roasted chestnut, all right? My husband grabs a little thing, and then he, he tries to bite into one, and oh my goodness, it's got a shell on it. So I guess you just don't bite through the shell. You got to figure out how to get the shell off of it, okay? Well, he figured out how to do that, and he says, here, you can have one. So I try this, this, this chestnut roasted over an open fire with all these wonderful ideas in mind, and I just crunch down it because I think it's going to be crunchy, right? It's not crunchy. Oh my goodness. It's like mush. It's like styrofoam in my mouth. And I didn't even want to swallow it. I was just like looking around, but there's so many people there. I mean, you can't just go, you know, and spit it out. So I'm thinking, oh my goodness. Oh my, my dreams, my ideas, my expectations, they've been crushed. Absolutely crushed. Oh, it was awful. Now I can hear you. Now you're like, all right, Tracy, how are you tying that story into this verse here? Well, let me, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard this saying, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it all. And it's not what you're thinking it's going to be. All right. And I can tell you example, example, example after example of people, of, of, of stories in the Bible, of people's lives who they just built up this one thing. They just focused on this one thing and then they started going towards that thing thinking their life would be complete if only. You can fill in the blank. If only I was famous. If only I had a lot of money. If only I had this person in my life. It would be everything I expected. But then you know what it turns out to be like? It turns out to be like that rusted, roasted chestnut in my life where you are it's just like a mouthful of mush and you want to spit it out because it did not meet up to what you were expecting it to be. So how do we resolve that? What, so do, we what do we do about that? We have to realize that God He's sovereign. He knows everything. He has a perfect will for our lives. That includes a perfect vocation, a perfect spouse, a perfect plan for each one of our lives. He knows the right path for us to take. He knows the right things to bring along into our lives, and he doesn't need our help trying to bring those things into our life. If we would get our focus back on the Lord, looking to him and asking him to lead our path, to lead us, and and he will he will give us those desires of our heart if our desires are focused on God however what do we often do sometimes we start getting our focus onto that thing whatever it might be and we start fantasizing about it we start building it up in our mind thinking if only I know my life would be much more than this if only and and just fill in the blank of what your if only is instead of focusing back on God realizing he knows 
all the ins and the outs. He knows those secret things that we know nothing about. He knows what that job could do for us or to us, or that it could be a complete disaster or that it could be the best thing that's ever happened to us. He knows the right spouse. He knows if that guy's going to be Mr. Wonderful or if he's going to be just a nightmare, that it's, it's going to be like the devil incarnate, okay? He's come to make your life miserable. But we don't know that ahead of time. All we can see is, is the for, front of it, okay? We just see face value, but God knows more than that. He knows a person's heart, okay? And he knows if that person's heart is focused on him or not, okay? Let me ask you this question. How hard is it to stay focused on God? Really? Come on. We all know it's really hard to stay focused on God because there's the enemy out there and there's our flesh in here. Oh, it's showing us this thing over here or looking over there and thinking, oh my goodness, that looks so great. And sometimes it's not a really bad thing. Okay. The, the, the enemy could be showing us something that isn't awful. It's just not God's best for us. And God knows what's best for us. We don't know. That's why we have to stay focused on the Lord so we can hear him and we can move towards those things that he wants in our lives, not what we want in our lives. And we think what's going to bring us the greatest joy in our lives. This one of Satan's strategies is to get us focused on something that's good or maybe even better than what we've got right now. But it's not what God has. It's the best for us. God has the best lined up for us and Satan wants us to settle for lesser than. One of the things I've learned in my own lives is if I will look at what my motive is behind wanting something, it will really determine whether it is from God or it's from me or the enemy. It can bottom line you right there. Am I doing this for my fleshly wants and desires or do I truly feel that that's the direction that God is leading me towards? Well, I hope these tips helped you out and helped you to start thinking about where your expectations are, if they're from the Lord or if they're from you. This has been Tracy from Master 414 Ministries with something to think about.